Hello, welcome to Your Simple Golf Swing. I'm Matt. In today's video, I want to talk about probably one of the most difficult skills to master in golf. If there were, if I had to pick the top two swing flaws that I see people, amateurs, having to try to overcome, this would be one of them. The other one would be simply not keeping the head still, moving the head back and then moving it forward in the swing. That is a consistency killer. But in this video, I'm going to talk about the independent arm movement and why it's so difficult to master and how you can master this. Some tips and, and ideas and con concepts that I want to put in your mind that are going to help you overcome that problem. Now, what I'm talking about with independent movement of the arms is a lot of amateurs, they get to the top and they start their arms going and they're lower body will sometimes lag behind or even if they get it going with their lower body their arms will outrun that swing now the reason that this is such a problem is because we have our swing plane is actually a rotating swing plane what i mean by that is we have the swing plane that we play take the club back on but as our chest turns and our arms get into position we also have this other plane that to where if we just swung the arms and not the upper body, you're going to see that you're going to be coming down way over here. Okay, that's what I mean by a rotating swing plane. So here's, here's the ball position. Normal, take it back on a swing plane, come back like this. That, that's because my, my shoulders turn the arms back into the ball. If we have independent arm movement, this is a big exaggeration, but the arms taking off first, you're going to see they're coming down on a different plane now. They're going to bottom out over here and go out that direction. So independent movement of the arms. It's going to cause you a lot of timing issues trying to come down into the, into the ball. If they're not synced up properly with the rest of your body, if they're not actually driven by the rest of your body, you're going to have consistency issues. So what we need to do, the way that Mike Austin and Mike Dunaway described it, they described this as a seven. Here's the top of the seven, there's the arm. And they said that what you wanted to do is that throughout that swing until impact, you wanted to maintain that seven. So you're coming down like this and these arms are not moving by themselves. They're being pulled down by the weight shift and by the turning of the shoulders, not the pulling of the arms. We're not pulling a church bell. You may have heard some people describe the start the downswing by pulling down on the rope for the church bell. We don't do that. What we're doing is we're letting that weight shift. You see how the weight shift starts pulling my shoulders and the shoulder in turn pulls that arm? That's what we want to do. Well, how do we keep from that natural tendency sometimes or or a almost a reflective response getting those arms going one of the things that i teach that comes from mike austin is mike austin talks about releasing the club from the top he talks about throwing the club from the top and and what that is is that's you get to the top your hands go like this they go like this it's not an arm throw it's a hand throw and what he did is he threw the club into the ball like that, okay? So this is going to sound like I'm saying don't throw the hands. It's not what I'm saying though. What you want to do, and this is a, a thought in your mind, is when you get to the top of your backswing, you want the feeling of starting your swing by I'm going to leave my hands up here. Now that's not the same as I'm not going to do this. What I'm saying is I'm going to leave my hands up here and I'm just going to come down and I'm not ever going to let those hands come off the shoulder. Now they're going to because of centrifugal force because that club is going to whip them through. But if you can teach yourself in your backyard hitting area while you're just doing practice swings to I'm going to get to the top, I'm going to leave my hands and turn my body, you're going to see that you're going to start to overcome that natural tendency to make your arms take off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to the top and I'm going to think, leave the hands there, turn the body. Now, 
It doesn't look like I did it. It doesn't look like I kept my arms from going. But you're going to find it is impossible to do that swing because your body is pulling that left arm. You're not going to be able to keep the hands there, but you're going to find that if you videotape yourself, you're going to be coming down off the side, which is exactly what you want. So it's a thought you want to put in your mind. You want to tell yourself, okay, I'm going to get to the top. And when I get to the top, I'm going to leave my hands there and I'm going to turn. And when you turn and throw the hands, you're going to find your arms are not going to overtake your body. If you film in slow motion, you're going to see that you're going to maintain, even, even with throwing those hands, that arm is going to maintain the seven all the way into impact and it's not going to come off your body until after impact. Go ahead and give that a try. I'm, you're going to really like the way it feels. You've heard people talking about maintaining lag. It's going to feel like you're maintaining lag. I don't teach maintaining lag. Mike Austin called holding your wrist to create lag. He called that golf's biggest lie. He did a video on that. It was great. This is not us consciously holding those wrists until impact. You can't do that. I don't teach that. Austin didn't teach that. But you're going to have that feeling of that, that lag feeling that so many people are really high on. So once again, get to the top, tell yourself you're going to keep your hands there and you're going to just throw your body at the ball. And you'll feel a big difference. You'll feel your timing is better. You'll bottom out more consistently at the same place and you'll generate incredible power because this is a huge power source maintaining that L. It's a, it's a very strong structure and that's where power comes from. Distance comes from power and speed. So we get the power by maintaining the structure and throwing our weight into the ball. And then we get the speed because you'll feel like your body is not moving very fast, but it is flinging that club at lightning speed. And we've got that, that release of the hands from the top. That's our speed. That's where our speed comes from. That's where you're another, uh, another part of the distance equation comes from is the speed and the power you got to have both not just not just one or the other so anyways if you like what you've seen please subscribe hit the like button hit the notification bell so you can see when i load up more videos and if you'd like to learn the entire swing from beginning to end in a really nice laid out orderly easy to understand easy to follow manner please click on the link down in the description for the online course Thanks so much. Have a great day.